Hi, it's Michael Boyle for Stack.com. I'm joined today by Anna Taco, one of my coaches at Mike Boyle Strength and Conditioning. Anna's going to help us with our kettlebell stuff, show us how to do a Turkish get-up today. But before she starts, I'm going to explain a little bit about how I became a Turkish get-up fan. I'll admit, in the past, I've looked at the exercise and thought, why? I've had that sensation of, I don't really get what they're trying to do. And luckily for me, you have these experiences. I had one of my older clients, and I'll show you my older client was unable to get up off the floor and his method of getting up off the floor was to get on his hands and knees and then get to a squat position and then stand up out of a squat position which was incredibly obviously uncomfortable the guy's 60 years old and I realized he has difficulty getting off the floor I still hadn't equated get up yet but what I said to him was what I need you to do is just roll over onto your elbow put your hand down get on your knee in a lunge position and then stand up out of that lunge and I suddenly had this epiphany. <laughs> it was not a perfect Turkish getup, but you realize that the getup really is a fundamental movement. It has the ability to get up from the ground. And it's something that we lose as we get older. So yes, it's a great core exercise. Yes, it's a great shoulder exercise. But it really becomes, to me, one of those fundamental primitive patterns. So I'm just going to kind of let Anna go. She's the expert. She'll be able to talk you through this and show you the, the basic steps of the Turkish getup. So take it away, Anna. All right. Well, first things first, that you, when you're first training with it, you don't want to start with a bell, just body weight. So you're going to be on your back, your knee that's up, your arm is going to go straight up. You want to make sure that shoulder's packed in and not popping out, because that could create some instability later on in the movement. So you want to pack that shoulder in tight. This uh, elbow's going to drive into the ground, and you're going to keep this foot right here planted in as well. You're going to drive up in a rolling pattern. You don't want to be sitting up like this. That's more of a straight leg sit up. You want to roll onto this side. Still looking up at the bell. Then you're going to turn this hand and drive up onto that hand. Notice how I keep that chest open. I don't slouch like I'm hanging out at the beach. I keep that chest up nice and open. All right. Then you're going to drive through this heel again and bring those hips up and swing this leg through. All right. Notice how this knee is lined up with this hand. All right. Some people tend to do this. It's a little bit harder to get all the way up when you do that. So make sure this knee is lined up with this hand, still looking up at the bell. When your hand comes off the ground, you can look straight forward, come up to half kneeling. All right? Then you're going to drive off this back foot and come straight up. When you go back down, you can slap this leg. That means you can bring that leg back, windshield wiper that hip. So you're swinging that leg back, just like here. So then you can stick out that hip and bring that down. A lot of people, what they do is just kind of bend over, and that's when they get a back problem or feel something in their lower back. You really want to shift that hip out so it's just like a hip hinge. Then you swing that leg through, hips down, elbow down, all the way down. And then bring the bell down safely and roll to your side. That's the proper way to do it. Once you have someone that can do it like that, you can add some weight. And I'll just run through it here. So bring the bell up safely, shoulders packed in, drive through that elbow, all the way up to the hand. Notice how my heel is still on the ground, hips up, swing that leg through, drive all the way up, this leg can go back, hip out, and when I put this hand down, it's still in line with that knee. Swing that leg through, hips down. Elbow down, all the way down, and then dismount the bell properly. What about sets and reps? Honestly, for the first time, I would do like five each side just to get the movement down. Um, when you have someone that's learning it, I just break it down. So you would go like elbow, all the way down, elbow, all the way down. Do that three times, and then just break it down so they get the movement, and then you could do, if it's in a warm-up, you can do five each side. If you're going for more weight, you can do one or two each side. Um, depends on where you're trying to put it in the workout. Yeah, Yeah, and I think, well, mobility, too. One of the things that we're looking at here, you're really developing. You'll, you'll watch with people who don't have good hip mobility. They're going to struggle with these positions. They're going to struggle getting themselves into this position, up into the lunge. So it really is, when you think about primitive patterning, when you think about things like crawling, when you think about things like push-ups, I realize that squatting, crawling, 
push-ups, hip hinging, and this action of actually being able to get yourself up off the ground really become critical for everybody, not just for an athlete. I think athletes take it for granted because if you said to an athlete, they could probably jump up from the ground and be able to do it, but it's developing the requisite mobility and stability to be able to do this is really what kind of makes this a difference maker. We like it because I think it's a high coordination core exercise. So you can take somebody and maybe who's a little bit bored with the conventional core stuff that we've been doing when they've been doing planks, they've been doing a lot of static stuff, and suddenly here you can give them something that's really challenging, probably to the point of being too challenging in some regards. I think they look at it and think, wow, this is, this is really difficult. And if you ask them to do five each side, our athletes sometimes will complain about five each side. They want three each side because it, it takes some time, it takes some work. And again, you get that. Now you've got a core exercise, a mobility exercise, an exercise with metabolic demand. So you get a really significant body of benefits out of the getup.